Hey, what's going on guys? Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. Here in today's video, I want to share with you how I make music with my computer. So I've done videos like this in the past and I used mostly free software in those videos. So I'll post links to those below. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the paid stuff that I use. So I don't make any money. I'm not promoting this stuff. I'm just showing you the stuff that I use simply because it's really, really cool stuff. Technology is amazing these days. So, you know, if you're willing to spend some money, you can get some really, really cool programs for uh, writing music. And that's what today's video is about. Um, just a quick heads up. Uh, this is done in Reaper. And I know just from people that are just getting started working in the DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, uh, or Reaper, or whatever doll you happen to be using, uh, people tend to get frustrated, and it's always at the very beginning. Like, if you can get past the initial learning curve, like just getting the program open, getting your, your guitar plugged into the computer, um, getting a signal in, just basic stuff like that. If you can get to that point, then you're good. So if you have to spend a day or so just kind of figuring out how to get it, get everything all set up, it's really worth it because once you get all set up, the rest of the stuff is pretty straightforward. You open up a drum program, you write a drum beat. You open up a piano program, you write your piano part. So the fun stuff is after the initial learning curve. All right, so I'm inside Reaper here, and the first thing that you always want to do is you want to specify your project tempo. So whether you're using live instruments, MIDI instruments, or any combination of the two, having a click track to work with, having a specified tempo to work with makes your life way, way easier. So the way that I did this was I strummed some chords on an acoustic guitar. I came up with my simple three chord chord progression that I used for this tutorial. And I tried playing it to a 120 BPM. That was too fast. I tried playing it to 100 BPM. That was too fast. I eventually found that 85 BPMs was right about where I wanted to be for the progression that I had in mind. So the way that I tested this was um, I set a uh, click source in um, Reaper. So you can just turn your metronome on. This will do the same thing. Your metronome is right here. And then you can right click it and adjust all the different properties of the metronome. And then every time you're playing something or every time you're recording something, your metronome is going to be playing. I don't like to do it that way. I like to leave my metronome off. I prefer to add a click source like this. So the way that you add a click source like that is you just add a new track, double click, add a new track, go insert, click source, and it's going to give you a visual click source like this. And you can extend this to be as long as you want. All right, so that's how you add a visual click source. So let me delete that since I already have one. And the visual click source is always going to line up to the grid, which is specified up here. So this is an 85 BPM at 4-4 time signature. By default, Reaper is going to be at 120 BPM, 4-4 timing. And you can just click on these and adjust these to whatever you want them. You're the one that specifies. So let me mute this real quick. So this is what a 85 BPM click track sounds like. So if I wanted to adjust this uh, click track, I could set say 150 or something. It's gonna sound like this. All right, so just by changing the tempo up here, the whole entire grid shifts and it's gonna change the click track. And all the MIDI instruments that we're gonna be adding are all gonna adjust themselves to this click speed. So let me put it back to 85. So that was the very first thing I did. I figured out what my tempo was going to be. I then added a track. I put a click source on it. And then I recorded the acoustic guitar along to the click track. So the, the acoustic sounds like this. So I had the click track playing, I had my acoustic in record, I had my signal coming in, I just recorded my acoustic guitar to the click source, and that's, so once I had my acoustic track lined up to this click track, I could then get rid of the click source later. So um, another benefit of having this visual click source is that it lets you easily see where the start of each measure is. So I actually want to cut this and paste it a bunch of times. So it becomes like a song length. So I know that it starts here. 
right there. And this is another thing. If you have snapping enabled, snapping enabled is always going to, you can only click on the grid lines on quarter notes. If you have snapping off, you can click anywhere in between. All right, so leave snapping enabled so you can easily find the start. So here's where the start is. So click on it, hit S, split it right there. And then right around here somewhere, it starts over. So right there is where it starts over. Click right there, hit S. So I'm gonna delete this bit right there. And now I can copy this whole thing and I can paste it right here. And it should line up perfectly. So let's hear how this sounds. So that was a perfect transition. You couldn't even tell that it was copy and pasted. So I just recorded this part once. I found where the start was. I found where the end was. Copy, paste. So now I'm going to just paste this for, I don't know, four minutes or so. And that is my first track. So now everything that I add after this, drums, bass, piano, is all going to be set to this 85 BPM. If I was using live instruments, it doesn't matter. I would still be recording to 85 BPM. So the, the project tempo is set. So the next thing I did was to add keys. So the keyboard program I'm using is called Easy Keys. So let me show that to you now. So I actually don't need this click anymore. I already have my acoustic guitar part recorded to an 85 BPM tempo. I have the uh, start and finish of where the progression starts over all figured out. So I don't need this click track anymore. So I can just delete that track, hit delete. So I'm gonna add a new track, call this Keys. I'm gonna give it a color, right click. Track color, set tracks to custom color. I'll give it a blue color. Now I just click on effects. This is how I'm gonna add the um, instrument to the track. Click effects, under instruments, go to easy keys. So this is what easy keys looks like. So I already have this installed into Reaper. I walk you through the process of uh, specifying your file path so you can get your plugins into Reaper. I talk about that in the how to make a backing track in 30 minutes video, which I linked to below. I'm not going to go over that again. I'm going to assume that you know how to get VST instruments into your doll. So this is what the, um, this is what the program looks like. So if I want, I can use this as just a sound engine. So I can use a MIDI controller and I can play the piano parts that way. So let me first show you how to do that. So this is the sound engine applied to this track. So, my input here, inputs one and two are my interface inputs. That's how I get my guitar signal in. But I want to set it to input MIDI. The key lab is the name of the um, MIDI controller I use. So I want to select that. So that's my input. I want to have record arm on. So now I can play the piano part like this if I want to. So I could do that if I want to, but I'm not going to do that for this video. I'm just going to keep record off. It doesn't matter what my input is because I'm going to have this uh, write the piano part for me. That's why it's called Easy Keys. Essentially, you just input the chords and it spits out the piano part using whatever kind of style you tell it to. So let me show you how to do that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to specify my looped area because it's just three chords. So I don't want to have this whole entire thing playing. Um, so it, it lasts two bars. So here's the part I want to loop. So I want to loop this part. All right. So I highlight that. And then I want to make sure that looping is enabled. Toggle repeat is on. If that's looping off. That's looping on. So now this little highlighted area is going to loop over and over. And I want to make sure that my cursor down here matches up with the cursor up here. So this is on one, two, three, one, two, three. These are the little things that you're going to learn the more you mess around with a doll and these instruments. It's things like having the cursor out here match the cursor in here. 
that's just a little tip that you're going to figure out along the way if you're new to this stuff. I want to have three chords. One, two, three. So this first chord is a half a bar. The second chord is a half a bar. And the third chord is a full bar. So the chords I'm using are C major, G major, and D major. So if you want to change these chords, just click on them. So C major is already there. Click on that. We're going to make that a G major. Click on this, make that a D major. So now it sounds like this. So I want to have looping enabled here. Change my loop length. So it just loops that over and over, and it's also going to loop this over and over out here. So if I just want it to play just inside of the program, I press this play button. But if I want it to play along with the, um, within the doll, along with the acoustic part that I already have recorded, I hit play out here. You can also hit space bar. Space bar will hit play in your doll too and stop. So those are just three basic chords. So if I want to add a style to it, I copy or I hit, um, I click out here, I drag, and um, it highlights all those. Then I select use browser MIDI, Easy Keys MIDI. So this is all the stuff that comes with the Easy Keys program. So if I want to try out different styles, let's say I want to try out a gospel straight 4-4 four, four, verse variation 1. So I don't really like any of those. Let me try some jazz ones. So let's say I like that and I can always hit play out here so I can, I can test different uh, piano styles along with the, um, you know, whatever's out in your doll, so. All right, so if I like what I found after trying a bunch of different ones, I just hit replace and then it writes that MIDI to here. So I can take this, now that it's written, I can click, I can drag it out to my doll, and there's my piano part. So keep in mind that whenever you're playing this, it's always going to play what's inside of here along with what's outside in your doll. So if this isn't lined up, if this is like that or something, and you go to hit play out here, it's going to sound really bad. That's why you want to make sure that whatever is lined up in here is lined up without here. But now they're both playing at the same time and I don't want that, so I can always just mute this in here. So mute what's inside of the player and then it's only going to be playing what's in your DAW out here. All right, so that's that. So you can adjust this MIDI if you want. You can double click on it, and these are all your MIDI notes. So. so you can move these around. You can customize this to your liking, and that's what I did for the uh, demo. I'm not gonna walk through the customization, but there's certain parts where I might want certain accents to land on certain beats. So you get something that's close, and then you can kind of just mess with it, move MIDI notes around, shorten things. So kind of just customize it to your liking, all right? So that's that. So the C, G, D part goes around three times. So I can just copy this, paste, paste. And then right here, it switches to F, uh, F, G, D. So I can get easy keys to write that for me. So line up number nine. 
I can bring this to nine. And I can keep the same style if I want. Well, first let me change this chord. So it changes to an F here. If I don't like the um, inversion, I can click on details. All right, so now it's F, G, D. So if I want a new style, I can, uh, you know, switch and say, um, use browser MIDI again. Let's say I want to switch my style up. place so let's say I want that style there now I can just drag this part out to here make sure I meet this in here so they're not both playing at the same time drag it to where I need it to be all right so here's that part So that's my piano part. So if I want to have all these glued together out here, I can highlight everything. I can right click and I can say glue items. Now this is all just one MIDI item. All right, you don't have to do that. It just makes things easier. Now I just have one MIDI item to move around. I can copy this. I can paste this. All right, so now I have a really long acoustic guitar part that's just looping over and over, and I have a really long keyboard part that's looping over, over and over. Let, uh, let's do the bass next. All right, so now we're gonna add the bass part. So again, I'm gonna use a program called Easy Bass. So let me call this bass. I'll give this a color, track color. I'll make this orange. All right, so select effects instruments easy bass so this program works the same way as easy keys you can just input the chords and it'll spit out a bass line for you there's also all kinds of other things that you can do you can actually use your guitar play a guitar part and then it'll convert it to a bass part for you watch youtube tutorials on easy bass there's so much stuff you can do with it for the purposes of this tutorial i'm just going to use it as a sound engine i just want a bass guitar sound and i'm just going to add my own bass part so Easy bass, the bass program is on here already, so anything I do is going to sound like a bass. So I'm just going to paint in MIDI. So the way you do that, click on your track, hold in control, and if you're on a Mac, it's command. So it turns into a pencil, your cursor turns into a pencil. So you're going to paint in an empty MIDI item, and I want it to last the length of the progression, which is from there to there. All right, so now I'm just going to draw in MIDI notes and that's going to be my bass part. So the bass line that I want Alright, so I'm doing, it starts out with a C and then a G and then a D. Alright, so that's what I want. That C, that G, and then right there. So this is the um, bass line I'm doing. You can turn these velocities down. It's super. It's it's all the way on the max velocity. So you can turn them down just by. You can do it here too. So 
So simple baseline. So now I can copy this. Uh, you can select all this stuff at once by right clicking and copying and then holding in control and clicking and dragging. Again, these are all little tricks that you learn the more you work with MIDI. So I just copied that. And so instead of having the low D note here, I'll bring it up here. So. So I'm just making a very simple bass line. You can add in little fills and stuff like that. You can use the Easy Bass program to add in slide effects, slap effects, all kinds of stuff. This is just very bare bones, basic writing a bass line using MIDI. All right, so I'm gonna copy this again. So that's that. And then the last two are F, G, and D, so. So instead of having the first um, two, two bass hits on the C, it's going to be on an F. Copy that. Bring this up to here. So that's my bass part. So I painted that in. All right, so now I have that and I can copy that and I can paste. It's not my bass part. Like I said, if you wanna mess around with this easy bass program, there's all kinds of cool stuff that you can do in this program. Too much time, not enough time in this tutorial to walk you through this program, but great program. Love it, easy bass. So that's the bass part. So next let's get to the uh, synth part. All right, so now we're going to add a synth part. So the program I use for this is called Serum. So let me show you that. So double click, add a new track, synth, S-Y-T-N-H. Yeah, that's how you spell synth. Uh, let me see. Give it a color. I always make my synth parts pink for some reason. I don't know why. That's just what I do. So add an effect, uh, instruments, Serum. This is what this looks like. So this is a really, really cool synthesizer program. So again, I can, you know, I can change my MIDI, change my input to MIDI if I want. I can turn on recording. I can hear all the different synth sounds. Just mess around with different uh, presets and stuff like that. Right, so there's a bunch of different sounds, all kinds of sounds, and you can tweak these sounds. This is called sound design, whole art to sound design, just a rabbit hole of, you, of uh, YouTube tutorial videos that you can, can watch on this program. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to select this one sound right here under synth, and it's called Dirty Pure. I really like the sound of that. That sounds like this. So I'm gonna have that sound. So that's my sound engine on here. So this doesn't have to be on. It doesn't matter. I was just showing you for demonstration purposes, if you wanted to control this with your MIDI controller, that's how you would do it. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steal MIDI. So this MIDI up here has already been written for me. Easy Keys wrote this MIDI for me. So if I want, I can just copy this and I can paste it down onto this track. And it's gonna play that same exact MIDI but it's gonna use this sound engine. So let's hear how that sounds, just by itself. Pretty cool. So 
you know, if it, I can experiment with different sounds if I want. So you can experiment with different sounds, but like I said, I'm just going to keep it at this dirty pure here. And that's actually, I'm just going to copy that because I already know what it's going to sound like. So if I play that all together with the rest of the music. So you might not notice it, but here's it without the synth. Here's here uh, mute. And maybe I don't want the keys there anymore. Maybe I just want the synth sound so I can mute the keys out of this. So maybe you want the keys in there, maybe you don't, but I just used the key program to write my MIDI for me and then I copied it and then I'm now having it play through a different sound engine. So that's another cool thing that you can do with MIDI. All right, now we add the drum part. So add a new track, drums, give it a color, right click, track color, I'll give it a yellow color, instruments, I'm using Easy Drummer. I showed you uh, in the other videos that I also use uh, MT Power Drum Kit. MT Power Drum Kit is a free one. Easy Drummer is a paid one. MT Power Drum is, is really awesome too. So if, if you want a free drum program, check that one out. That's the one I talk, talk about in the uh, How to Make a Backing Track in 30 Minutes video. But let's go with Easy Drummer for this video. So again, there's a ton of stuff you can do in this program, but just to, uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, I just click on browser and all these various different MIDI packs to choose from. Songwriters pack. Let's just try a few of these drum beats out. I think I used mid tempo straight four, four. And again, you can test these out. <clears throat> if you have a loop section out here, you can kind of... Uh, it's on three. Get this starting on three. So I'm just going to go with variation two here. You can actually just click and drag this right out here. So I don't have any, any uh, MIDI down here, so I don't have to mute anything out. So I just chose one that I liked and just drug it right out to my doll. So make sure I line it up. So this, all, this drum beat actually only lasts for um, four measures and my progression actually goes around five times. So I'm just gonna grab a fill for right here. So I'll go to fills, under songwriters pack, half tempo, straight four, four, fills. two measures, drag that right to there. Sometimes it'll do that to you if you have it overlapping with other MIDI. Hit cancel. 
drag it. If you drag it on top of other MIDI, that little prompt will come up. So you just drag your drag it away and then line it up like that. So I may want different fills. All right, so I may want different fills. Like say I want that fill there, but I want a different fill here. Let me try like variation eight right there. Whatever, I'm not going to sit here and try out all the fills, but you get the idea. You just click and drag, super easy. So I have my acoustic part, I have key part, I have bass part, I have synth part, I have drum part, and I can just add and remove. I can just add and remove things as necessary. You know, maybe I want the drums to start here. Maybe I want a little fill to lead the drums in. So you can easily do something like that. Let's take a piece of this MIDI right here. So let me take that four count right there. I just split it. I clicked right there, I hit S. I'm gonna copy that little piece of MIDI. I'm going to bring it out to here. I'm going to put it right in the front there. Let's see how that's Maybe you only want the fill to last you know, half a measure. A little bit more subtle. You can do all kinds of stuff. It's just little pieces of MIDI that are written for you by these programs. That's why they call them easy drummer, easy bass, easy keys. It's like having a drummer, a bass player, and a keyboard player right on hand. I say, hey, do this, play like that, put a fill there, play this beat, blah, 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 boom that easy so is it cheating yes it's definitely cheating who cares it's fun so that's the drum part all right so now i'm going to do the lead guitar part so i'm using the amp sim here and i made another video called getting started with amp sims i will post that below the amp simulator i use is called s gear but you don't need an, an amp sim if you don't want to you can just take a regular guitar amp stick a microphone in front of the guitar amp so it's picking up your guitar signal plug that microphone uh, cord into your interface and that's how you'll get your signal into the computer. Or you can use, you know, if your amp has a line out jack, you can just plug a quarter inch cable into your line out jack from your amp into your interface, get your signal in that way, or you can just use an amp sim. So check out that video that I made about getting started with amp sims. I have mine already installed, so let me make a new track here. I'll call this lead guitar. I'll give it a color. I always make my lead guitar tracks red for some reason. All right, so lead guitar, so effects. So this one's going to be found under VST. VST, and the one I use is called S Gear. So it looks like this. You have a delay module, you have a reverb module. This is your uh, cabinet section, this is your amp section all kinds of stuff in this uh, amp sim software i think it's 119 dollars i spent for it sometimes it's on sale for like 100 bucks awesome software i love it um so make sure that record arm is on and make sure that this record monitoring is on otherwise you're not going to hear your guitar tone so here's my guitar tone right now let me see which one i have it set to
So you can hear the different uh, tones. All right, so that's just how you get your guitar signal in. So you can either record your guitar or you can just jam along with stuff. If you want to just press play with the other stuff. You can just jam along with the track that you just made or you can actually record it doesn't matter you just have to make sure that record arm is on and monitoring is on so you hear your guitar tone the benefit of using amp sims really is that you can uh, you can adjust your tone after the recording has already been done so let me just solo this track right here so this is my guitar track <laughs> So if I turn the effect off here, if I turn S gear off, here's my clean signal. So that's what it sounds like, the clean signal. So turning that back on. So let's say that has like too much delay or something. I can turn stuff, I can even turn delay off. No You can really, you know, you can tweak your uh, guitar tone after the recording has already been made. So that's something that's possible when you use amp sims. If you just, uh, you know, record your amp or something like that where all the uh, effects are coming from your amp, that's fine, but then you can't tweak the tone after the recording's been done. That's why I like amp sims. All right, so now I'm going to show you a few mixing tricks that I use. Uh, these are really easy to implement and they make your tracks just sound super good. So um, the first thing is I like to record every guitar part twice, unless it's like an improvised solo. If it's something that I wrote, like a, an acoustic guitar part that's just chords, or if it's like a written solo, I'll always record it twice, pan one guitar to the left, pan the other guitar to the right. Um, the reason is, is because when you play these two car, uh, guitar parts at the same time, it creates this natural chorus effect. Because when you play one part, the waveforms are always going to be slightly different. There's the one guitar part, there's the other guitar part. You can look at any part of this. You can see that the waveforms don't quite line up. So let me put both of these into the middle for now. And I will solo. So here's what this one sounds like. And then here's the other one. And then here's both of them together. So that slight variance between the first uh, guitar part and the second guitar part just add this really cool chorus effect sound. So you do that, you pan one all the way to the left, you pan one all the way to the right, and here's what you have. All right, so that's that trick. The next trick I want to show you is called slapback delay. So you can add delay, you can add reverb, you can add effects to any single track that you want simply by clicking on this effect thing and just selecting the effect that you want to add. Or you can create a separate track, call it delay, add the effect to this track, so it's under Kakos. Kakos is the Reaper effect. So Rhea Delay is the one I'm gonna use. I'm gonna set this delay to these settings. Wet is at zero. 
dry is all the way down. So this track is going to have only the fully affected sound and none of the dry sound. And then I'm going to set the length to 0.5. So 0.5, that's a half of an eighth note. That's a sixteenth note. So 0.5 of an eighth note is a sixteenth note. That's the delay that is on this track. So there's nothing on this track right now, so there's nothing to delay. But I can take this guitar part, I can take this guitar part, or this key part, I can take any of these parts, and I can just send it to this track, and it's going to apply that delay to it. So let me put this in the center. So I'm going to send this acoustic part right here by clicking on the routing, dragging, bringing it right to there. So this yellow line indicates that something is, this, this track is being sent somewhere. And this blue line right here is indicating that this track has a receive. So yellow means send, blue means receive. So this track is being sent here. So let me just solo this out. And this is what slapback delay sounds like. So it's very drastic, but you can reduce that and have just a subtle slapback effect by going like this. Clicking on the routing here, receive from track one, acoustic left. So you can have uh, how much is being sent to this track right here. So that's a good sweet spot right there. So here is what it sounds like without the effect. And here's with the effect. So it's a very subtle effect, but that's what slap back the way. That's how I use it. So very subtle. So. Now that I have my delay down here, I can take acoustic right. I can also send it to that same track. Just click and drag. Now this has a yellow line and this one has a yellow line indicating that these are both being sent somewhere. And then I can come down to the track, click on this. You can see receive from track one, receive from track two. So I'm just going to kind of bring this down to around the same level around 18 or so. So these are both around negative 18. So bring this left, bring this right where I had it before. So these are both being sent to this delay track. All right, very, very uh, nice effect. So without that, with it. Alright, so that's a really cool effect, slap back delay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add reverb. I'm going to do reverb the same way. So instead of adding reverb to this track, this track, this track, this track, I'm just going to add reverb onto one track and send whatever instruments I want to to that one single track. So create a track, call it reverb, Add an effect, Kakos. So there's a couple different reverb effects in here. I'm going to go with this one, Reverb, Reverb. So again, wet is going to be right in the middle, plus zero, minus zero. Dry is going to be all the way down. So if you want, um, you can uh, add this reverb generator here, or you can add a reverb file. So. I'm going to do this. I'm going to add the reverb file. And I downloaded this from the Reaper website. I'll show you in a second. It's called Kenny's IR Reverb. Kenny Joya, he's like the uh, the Reaper guy on YouTube. Best tutorials on YouTube is uh, from Kenny. Um, so you download Kenny's IR Reverb pack. And I always just use this Kenny's drum verb. I always just like the sound of this reverb. So I'm going to add that. So that's the reverb generator that I added and it's right on this track now. So where did I get that? I went 
you can go right to uh, Reaper, the website, go down to the uh, footer, go down to the stash. This is where you can download all this stuff. You can just reverb right there. Where is it? Somewhere around here. There it is. Kenny's IR Reverbs. You just download that and then that's where I got that uh, file from. So Kenny's IR Reverbs. You can also add reverb in some other ways. You know, you could use, um, you could add reverberate. That's another reverb effect. Uh, within this effect right here, you could say add, you could say reverb generator, mess around with different reverb types and stuff like that. But I'm just going with this this external file, this uh, Kenny's IR drum verb. I just like the sound of that reverb. So that's what I'm using. That's on this track right here, reverb track. So again, this has nothing on this track right now, but I want to send uh, the acoustic guitar to it starting out. So let's just do acoustic left for now. I'll put that in the center. I'll solo that. I'll solo reverb. So I'll send acoustic left down to reverb. All right, so let's hear all the two sound together. Very, very intense. So I can just click on this, turn the reverb down. You see receive from track one, acoustic left. So let's find the sweet spot for that. That sounds pretty good. So, so acoustic left has been sent to reverb. Acoustic right, I'm going to send to reverb now too. Let me make sure that both levels are the same. So acoustic left is at around 15. Acoustic right, I want around negative 15 as well. Make sure this is panned left. Make sure this is panned right. All right, so this the more you mess with Reaper, the more you, or any doll, the more this stuff just, it's very easy to do. You just get the hang of how this stuff works. So get through the initial learning curve, as I said. So acoustic left is sent to this reverb, acoustic right is sent to this reverb. Let's hear how all of them sound at the same time. So a little bit of reverb going on there, a little bit of that slap back delay effect going on there. It creates this bigger sound. So um, let's see. I like to send, uh, since I already have a reverb set up, I'm going to send keys to it. So let's get that dialed in. I'll solo keys. I'll solo reverb. So I'm actually on a, a different um, a different project than I was in the previous section. This is the this is the same one I used for the demo in the beginning. So the keys are going to sound a little bit differently than what I showed you in the beginning, but it's all the same thing. I just I'm using easy keys. Here's how my keys are sounding. All right, so a little bit of reverb going on the keys. I also like to uh, add reverb to the drums too. So here's drums, take routing, send it right to there. So you can see this reverb has a receive from acoustic left, acoustic right, keys and drums, so.
that sounds pretty good. So now I have reverb on acoustic left, acoustic right, keys, and drums. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another track. I'm gonna call it Compression. This is just a super quick thing I do just to kind of beef up my drums even more. I just add a compression track. I add an effect to this track under Kako's Rea Comp. That's the uh, compressor that comes with Reaper. Um, again, wet is at zero, zero. Dry is all the way down. Turn auto makeup gain on. The compression ratio, I leave at just four to one. And then I'll just adjust this to taste. So I'm gonna send this drum track here to compression. So now this is compressed drums and this is just the, uh, the regular drum track. So I can control each one of these separately. So um, let's hear, I'm just gonna solo my drums. Uh, we'll keep the reverb in there as well. So let's hear all the sounds. So here's the drums without compression. Here's with compression. So it's a little bit beefier. So again, the settings that I used for compression are wet, zero, zero, dry all the way down. Auto makeup gain is on. That means any gain reduction that comes as a result of compression is made up by clicking that. The only effect, or the only thing I changed was uh, the ratio, four to one ratio. And then I just kind of messed around with the threshold here to taste. So that's all I did for compressor. All right, so now these drums, I have the dry drum track here. I have the reverb, which has a bunch of things being sent to it. And then I have the uh, compressed drum track here. So all together, this sounds like this. And then if you want to get to a mixing window, uh, you can hit um, where did it? Alt O, Alt O. And that'll take you to your mixing panel that looks like that. So just play it. So you can mix like that. So um, hitting Alt-O will um, take you to this window, take you to that window. And I think you can also say View Mixer, View Mixer. But hitting Alt-O will get it so it's on your screen like that. So then after you have all your parts laid down like I do now, then you can just kind of cut and paste and, uh, you know, take stuff out, add stuff in, take drums out here, add drums in there, just kind of arrange it like a song, however you want. It's just a bunch of little pieces of, uh, pieces here, piece there, move it around, but it's a lot of fun. It's like video games to me. I could easily spend 16 hours just messing around with this song. So anyway, that's uh, making songs on a uh, computer. I hope you guys liked this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.